Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll learn concept related to memory read and write bus cycle for 886 microprocessor for both minimum and maximum mode operation. Now, whenever microprocessor, any microprocessor or 886 microprocessor wants to send some data into the memory or read some data from the memory, uh, it will first send address and then in the next cycle, it will either receive data or it will send data to that particular memory. So consider this is a microprocessor and uh, this is memory. Now in memory, there are different different locations. This concept will will we'll study in the next tutorials. Now every memory is having certain addresses. Okay, let's take example 0, 1, 2, 3 and each location contains some data. Okay, now whenever microprocessor want to access this data either for uh, reading or writing operation, it will first send this address using address lines. Now in 886 microprocessor, we are having total 16 data lines and we are having total 20 address lines. Okay, now <clears throat> for, now for, for, for accessing this memory elements or memory segments, very first thing is microprocessor send address and this corresponding to that particular address microprocessor either receive or send data now this operation is normally explained with the help of this memory read or write bus cycle for 86 microprocessor now this is the diagram for memory read bus cycle in minimum mode okay now memory read it means we access memory we access data from the memory okay now for the 86 microprocessor one bus cycle contain four states or four clock cycles okay now every clock cycle per in, in the every clock cycle microprocessor performs certain operations okay so we are having t1 t2 t3 and t4 now for 86 microprocessor for both memory read and write operation for both minimum and maximum more we always have to mention this t1 t2 t3 and t4 clock cycles because in 86 microprocessor four clock cycles is equal to one bus cycle okay now this memory read operation is explained with the help of this diagram okay in which is in minimum mode okay now as i said whenever microprocessor want to access memory very first thing is it will send address okay now in the t1 cycle T1 cycle is having this negative and positive edge. Okay, so this is T1 cycle. In the T1 cycle, microprocessor always send addresses. As I said, whenever microprocessor want to access memory, very first thing is it will send addresses. Okay, so that's why whenever we draw this diagram, very first thing is we have to draw this four clock pulses. Okay, four clock cycles, which will form one bus cycle then AD0 to AD15 and A16 to A19. Now this AD0 to AD15 represent both addresses and data in 86 microprocessor because as we know this addresses and data are multiplex in 86 microprocessor which are AD0 to AD15, okay? Now this BHE bar, bus high enable pin. We, uh, very first thing is we have to draw this AD0 to AD15 and A16 to A19. So we'll get total A0 to A19 address buses and D0 to D15 data buses. Okay. Now in the first cycle, addresses will be fetched on the address lines. And at the same time, we have to enable this ALE pin. Now ALE stands for address latch enable. Now we have to apply this signal to the latch, which we, which will inter which we normally interface externally to the 886 microprocessor. Now this particular ALE signal will enable latch, which will be connected to the 886 microprocessor, and at that time it will latch address on this particular latch output. Okay, so for that purpose we have to make this ALE pin high in the first clock cycle and for the remaining it will be low so in the first clock cycle we send addresses and at the same time we, we send BHE bar pin also bus high enable pin it will be either low or high depending upon the access of higher byte if we want to access higher uh, address bus then at that time BHE bar should be low okay 
so in the first clock cycle uh, t1 cycle we 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 uh, send addresses so al is pulsed high then bhe bar is made high or low depending upon the 8 bit or 16 bit address boundaries then next is m io bar now whenever we talk about memory at that time we must have to keep this m pin uh, on the high uh, state okay so that's why m oblique io bar pin will be high so whenever we talk m stand for memory and io stand for input output okay so m is active high pin and io bar that is active low pin so if we access uh, some input output devices at that time we have to make this uh, pin into the low state okay so m io bar is high so to indicate memory operation it remains high during the <clears throat> during the entire bus cycle okay and at the t4 cycle it will go to the initial state initial state that is low okay now next pin is dtr bar dt stand for data transmit and r bar stand for receive okay now as we are performing read operation read means we receive data okay now whenever we receive data at that time we must have to make this r bar pin low so that's why we are making this pin low and at the end we are making it into the initial stage so whenever we perform read operation we have to make this low pin whenever we perform write operation write means we transmit data from microprocessor to the outside devices so we have to make this pin into the higher state now in this example we are reading data so we have to make this pin low okay so next dtr bar is low and remains low throughout the cycle to indicate direction of the data transfer as memory to the processor okay now next is address is put on address bus so into the, this t1 cycle we put address uh, and the falling gauge of al is used to latch the address from the address bus okay now in the t2 cycle this cycle in the t2 cycle bus is turned around then rd bar goes low okay now next is rd bar which is very very important control signal rd stand for read operation now we are performing memory read operation so rd bar so this is active low pin so this pin we have to enable into the t2 cycle not in the t1 cycle because in t1 cycle we we generate addresses and not the data and as whenever we want to perform read or write operation that operation will be performed on data not address and data is always available after t1 cycle okay so in the t1 cycle we we enable all the control signal which are related for address generation okay now in the t2 rd bar goes low as read control signal then data enable goes high to enable a to a to a to six trans receiver now this data enable pin is very very important whenever <clears throat> whenever we we access uh, data from this ad0 to ad15 line at that time this pin we have to make high okay now the detailed description of this uh, uh, i have mentioned in the pin description or, or notes okay so please refer to that then bhe r bar goes high if it was made low in t1 cycle so in the t1 cycle if we are making this high then it will go into the low state okay so bhe bar is also responsible for address generation so initially if we we, we are making this low or high depending upon its uh, condition we have to change its states into the t2 state okay now the status is put on a16 to a19 lines the activity starts at t2 and continues to t4 okay now in the t3 cycle data enable goes low okay so this will goes to low data is put on ad0 to ad15 line now this is very important in the t3 cycle we put data okay now this 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 state is very very important okay so t3 state is very important uh, for putting data now data is put on the ad0 to ad15 uh, lines which are demultiplex which will form d0 to d15 lines okay now <clears throat> Now data is uh, um, ready to read and in the t4 cycle this particular m oblique io bar it will go into the low state now basically in t4 cycle all control signals or all signals goes into the initial condition initial condition means if this is high ad0 to 
AD15, then after T4, it will go into the initial condition. BHE bar, initial condition. ALE bar, initial condition. RD bar, initial. So that in the next clock pulses like T5, T6, etc., microprocessor again will fetch next address, new address, and again it, it will send data and likewise operations will be executed <coughs> continuously okay now this is a uh, explanation related to memory read or write bus cycle okay now uh, sorry memory read bus cycle now in memory write bus cycle this is for minimum mode okay now for memory write bus cycle all the diagram or timing diagram is same just the, the only difference is data is normally put into the t2 cycle because whenever we read data from the memory it will take some time so that time is represented in memory read operation so that's why we we, we normally take data into the t3 cycle uh, in in read operation but in write operation after putting address immediately we start putting data okay so into the t2 cycle we put data onto the data bus and this instead of rd bar pin we use wr bar uh, pin now this wr bar pin is again enabled into the t2 cycle and after t3 cycle it will go into the original state so again ale is pulsed high bhe bar made high then again uh, all these explanation will be given inside this particular description okay now this is for minimum mode okay now similarly <clears throat> if if we uh, compare both the diagrams then you must have noticed that the logic for both read and write operation is same the only difference being is use of wr bar pin instead of rd bar pin okay and the delay for reading data in read bus cycle okay now this is memory read bus cycle for maximum mode now in maximum mode certain signal uh, cer certain control signals uh, normally change okay so we are having s2 s uh, s0 s1 s2 and uh, certain io input output read uh, read cycle and all these things okay so the explanation of these are also given inside this particular slides okay so you can read it and you can draw these particular signals according to the specification according to the question okay thank you